Buenas tardes. Seguimos reactivando la economía desde la BNU Barcelona New Economy Week. Y recordamos que lo hacemos también gracias a los amigos de Servi Habitat, el servicer de referencia en la gestión de, acti de activos financieros e inmobiliarios. Eh, también os recuerdo que hay muchas actividades gastronómicas y hay un canal para ello, el Cooking and Music, que conecta desde la Bucaría y Casa Sea. Pero nosotros estamos en la Estación de Francia con Adif y ahora vamos a dar paso al primer panel del día sobre retail y marketplaces. El título en inglés, The Global Acceleration of Hybridization and Future Prospects. Emma Drapé será la moderadora de todo este panel. Emma es fundadora de Anima Branding y mediará el debate junto con Conexión eh, con Sudáfrica, India y Argentina. Todos ellos, todos los eh, participantes hablarán sobre estrategias digitales en pequeñas y medianas empresas, el concepto de large retail chains y sobre todo un tema que ya ha salido en el anterior debate, puntos físicos del market, sí o no. Un tema que con Emma eh, hablamos largo y tendido la semana pasada cuando nos llamamos. Emma, todo tuyo y muchas gracias. Esta eh, será un panel que conectará digitalmente con tres continentes distintos. Muchas gracias, Nuria. Uh, thank you, Nuria. Thanks to the organization of this fantastic event. I'm very pleased to be moderating this panel. Um, we have very relevant uh, uh, speakers with us today, members of the retail, marketing, and e-commerce community who will try to put some light into the future perspective of this current situation. So now let me introduce you to our speakers. As uh, Nuria said, they are spread all over the world. Uh, we are very lucky for that. And uh, we, have, uh, we have, first of all, I would like to uh, thank very much their presence. Uh, from India, Dr. Hitesh Bhatt. Dr. Hitesh has around uh, 25 years experience uh, working with some uh, India top organizations in diverse uh, sectors and verticals, including retail, pharma, automotive, and other um, other sectors. Uh, currently, Dr. Bhatt is the Director of Marketing and Communications at Retailers Association of India. Uh, this association is a charter to support employment, to support investments, and enhance consumers' choice and industry competitiveness. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bhatt, and good afternoon. From South Africa, we have uh, Mrs. Michelle Francis Padayashi. Michelle uh, joined the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa as executive head in, Mar in March uh, 2017. Prior, uh, Michelle joined uh, Accenture and held service uh, delivery management positions in planning and forecast areas of supply chain and procurement. And he has worked in the implementation of projects like uh, in, in companies like Unilever, McCain Foods, uh, etc. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Padayachi, for being with us. And uh, from Argentina, we have um, Mr. Mariano Tordo. Mariano has uh, 10 years experience in, um, uh, in digital ecosystem. He currently works as an e-commerce and marketing uh, director at Pharma City and is member of the board of directors in the CACE, the Argentine, Argentine Chamber of Electronic Commerce. Uh, so good morning, Mr. Tordo. Thank you very much. We are not hearing. Can you hear me now? Yeah? OK. Uh, first, I would like to, uh, f before uh, going uh, into the debate, I would like to, uh, to share some data about the current situation that we are facing here in Spain. So then we can, we can compare it to other places around the world, since we are very lucky to, to have you all over uh, the globe. And, and you can share with us different points of view. 
in in our country, unfortunately, um, our situation is quite dark. Um, we have a forecast of 20% uh, of stores uh, closure. Uh, the largest uh, fashion retailer, uh, Inditex, is uh, about to close, they say, 1,200 stores around the world. It's not uh, only a situation that is affecting Spain, this affects uh, every, everybody. But on the other hand, we have an uh, increase of online consumption up to 75% in some, in some sectors, and, uh, but the, uh, an average of uh, like 50%. Um, so this is a, a very unusual situation that I think it's, it's going to be very interesting to discuss with you uh, what, what can we learn from this and, and what can we do and put some light into the future that we, can, that we are going to face from now on. So if you, uh, if you agree, I'm going to start with the questions. So uh, then my first question is for Mr. Mariano Tordo. Um, well, actually, no, I would like to, sorry, I would like to that you uh, give me uh, your point of view or your uh, explanation about your situation. And for example, we can start with Mariano Tordo, um, the situation in Argentina and how you are facing uh, this um, new economy uh, situation. Sorry, yes, hello, thank you everyone. Um, I'm not hearing you very well, but you, uh, I think you asked me about how is the situation in Argentina and how we are facing this lockdown. And mm. Actually, we're still on lockdown and moving faster to to understand where we are going to be out of the lockdown. 200 days when, since we start, we are in lockdown. And now the in Argentina is, is difficult because for retailers, because in this six months, the shopper behavior changed a lot. We, we see the adoption of, of the new normal on shopping by the e-commerce penetration and retailers are facing the, the, the challenge of adopting this new way of shopping and they are moving faster on to, to adapt the, the value proposition that they gave for the physical stores to move into an online pro, uh, proposal. We see that uh, the demand grow more than five times and this means that we have to move fast to adapt this new way of of shopping and the players that that are moving fast are the ones that are gaining this new shopping behavior and also we are seeing that there are new players uh, taking this piece of cake or we are they are uh, taking this new demand and we are seeing this change every day so the the, the situation for physical stores or, or retailers that our main business is based on physical stores is struggling a different, a difficult uh, situation. Um, but the thing is, we need to let up fast or, or die fast too. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna ask now uh, to Mrs. Uh, uh, Pada Yoshi if, uh, if she can share with us some, uh, some data also from uh, her country. Can you hear me? Is there... Mrs. Padayachi, this question is for you. Can you please share some, uh, some data about the, the situation in, in, in South Africa? Thank you. I just want to say a big thank you for the invite. And um, as Mariano said, we are also still in lockdown, but at level one in South Africa. Uh, I must add that, uh, you know, the, the economy in South Africa took a severe and significant knock, uh, particularly in April and May, uh, just as we moved into level uh, five lockdown. Uh, our GDP growth has been negative by 51%, um, and that is significant. And being part of the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa that plays a pivotal role uh, in the sector, uh, where we create 20% of the, the jobs within the country, uh, we saw a significant change uh, uh, in moving from uh, 
just shopping at bricks and mortar to online significantly. However, but because of our rural dynamic, we have a lot of um, rural areas and uh, township areas that still needed to connect to, to shops. And based on that traveling, we found that uh, uh, the, the social connection within yeah. townships increased, their need to digitalize increased, and they need to be get connected to this digital world really just leapfrogged. And as a collective, I think that both uh, public-private uh, public partnerships, it is what, what is getting us through. And we were able to successfully move from a, a very strict lockdown where we had no cigarettes, no alcohol uh, sales for, for, some, for some time uh, to a level lockdown where we're understanding how the regulator um, and our members, particularly retailers and, and, and manufacturers, are working together. On the other note, uh, you know, uh, the country has seen a 42 percent uh, drop in employment because a lot of people looking for jobs were at home and couldn't connect, and that was uh, tough for all of us to understand. Um, and the new way of working at home and connecting uh, through digital platforms is certainly extending across the country, and there's been a significant growth of, to the tune of 38 percent online sales. We're seeing our biggest retailers, whether they be ShopRite, Pick and Pay, or MassMart, or Spa, and the likes of Woolworths, all increasing their, um, their online footprint. And uh, they, 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 they are working together to support how they connect and in, improve efficiencies uh, to get product uh, onto shelves more timelessly and also to get categories uh, across different sectors more easily available. Uh, it's been a, a tough time. But I think the opportunity for online is, is here, and we need to move with speed to capitalize on improving our uptake there. Thank, thank you, thank Michelle. You. And now, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hitesh, please, can you share your, uh, your, information, your information about, about the about India? India? Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me here to this wonderful conference. If you look at the private consumption uh, accounts for approximately 58% of India's GDP, therefore expected to be around uh, $1,700 billion. Of this, about 48% or $825 yeah. billion is consumer spending on merchandise and the remaining $875 billion is spent on a range of services and small savings. Consumers are First, spending on food, personal, and home hygiene is the second one. Medical expenses is the third one. Fitness is the fourth one. And then there is education and then entertainment and investment. The big ones that the consumers have gone down on are dining out, travel, luxury, uh, new cars, new bikes, tobacco, uh, and apparel. So these are the categories where the consumption and the consumers have gone down in, in purchase. If you look about 550 billion out of the 825 billion dollars of consumer spending on merchandise is accounted for by food and grocery. This spending is likely to see the least impact either in terms of volume consumed across different sub segments under this category or on the retail channels that largely sell food and grocery items. The most visible impact in this category will be some more headwinds on lifestyle foods, for example, health foods with relatively more exotic ingredients, premium snack foods and premium alcohol and beer, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hitesh, yeah. I would like to uh, go on with the, with the rest of the uh, questions. So, and we, I think we don't have um, very much time. To, uh, and uh, I'm sure that you have a lot of things to, to share with us with the coming, uh, with the coming questions. Um, I, I would like to, to, to make a question now also to uh, Mr. Mariano Tordo. Um, and, and here we start all, all, the, all the questions uh, of, the, of the panel. Um, before the, the lockdown, uh, all, uh, most of the retailers um, wanted to find ways to, to, to bring uh, people into their stores. And now we are facing um, a, a totally different uh, situation. What, do you, what, can, what can you 
can you tell us about uh, about it? Uh, are are now facing a totally opposite situation, looking for online customers, or are they going to, to still push into the the, um, the trying to get people into the in-store shopping? Yes, it's 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 a good question. The thing is, store visits are not going to be as we used to know them um, now. Uh, the retailers are facing the way they can adapt their their value proposition, as I mentioned before, to this new shopper, this new online shopper. One of our big concerns we are seeing here is not with this online penetration is and not recovering the, the store visits, is that we are seeing brands moving from B2B to B2C directly, uh, moving a step forward forward to, to in, in the chain. So uh, the, the thing that every retailing in Argentina uh, is doing now is adapting its, its, its online experience, online services, and the supply chain uh, value proposition as well to, to absorb this 5x increase in, in, in demand. We are seeing this in grocery and pharmacy and in, in every industry and and also in electronics and everyone is 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 moving to this. And as I mentioned before, 200 days of lockdown uh, make every every player, even restaurants, move to to an an online experience with shoppers. So yes, the concern is which is going to be this new normal. But we are seeing it's not going to be uh, as as we used to to know, and and the other thing, the other effect that is very important that we are seeing on the good players that are moving fast to to absorb this penetration is the one that not only has uh, a good e-commerce, the, the structures, the organization, the the agile way of working, the horizontal way of leadership is on, is also very important to to adapt and to adopt this new uh, shopper behavior. Thank you, Mariano. And um, also, uh, what do you think is the main priority now for retailers? What, what, their what? focus. The main for priority for retailers is, is this, to, to be prepared to, 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 to be ready to, to absorb this new way of shopping. and But the thing is, with the same organization, with the same way of organizing our, our, our people, our way of working with working for home, proof already that we can run our business effectively, actually more effectively than we used to run it. So adopting the way of working, maintaining the, 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 the incomes from a new channel, and giving the, the shoppers and of the channel experience because we all we already we also have the stores and they play a good uh, a role in the in the value proposition so the the big priority is uh, ad adopting the new online uh, consumption shoppers behavior and being uh, even in the pnl against the, all the physical stores that we have and Yesterday, I read an article saying that H&M is closing 250 stores. So we are moving faster also on taking decisions of what where we have to cut and when, where we have to put focus on, on investments so that we can have a, a, a healthy uh, results. The same question to, for uh, Mrs. Padayachi. Uh, how do you think, uh, the, um, or where do you think retailers should put the focus? And um, as you also mentioned, the, the small retailer, it's, it's also because when we talk about retail, we all we always think about large chains, but what about the small retailer? W what, what should they do since their resources are like more limited than largest companies? Uh, thanks for the question. So I, I think in South Africa, as you uh, uh, you will all recognize that the SMMEs is really the lifeblood of our economy, and and the shift of, of them getting access to 
digital platforms, just basic rights to data is what's going to help us survive a next, uh, and prepare for the next uh, COVID. And, and I think recognizing that the bigger retailers have seen that the people in their shops are important. And HR has become quite an important part on, on, on managing uh, the people component because they've got to be out there to stock the shelves. So the retailers have also recognized that HR plays a, a big role uh, in, in getting people ready. Uh, what we have seen is a shift to health and hygiene. Uh, there's a bigger consciousness of, of that, not just getting, but getting onto a taxi, uh, into the taxi, traveling and, and, and getting our consumers safely to retailers. How are you taking them in and keeping them safe? That's been a big shift, and I think that will continue to grow um, and to have policies that ensure that our retailers can take care of consumers, but also the employers. I think that's a fundamental shift for all economies um, is that we treat uh, our staff within the retail channels well. We also see people really checking in on a shopper that's scanning my, uh, you know, my product and I'm paying for it. How are they doing? And I think it's really good to see that humanity in South Africa, um, and that's been great to see. Uh, retailers significantly recognize that they've got to fast track their digital footprints. What we've seen in our country uh, through the use of a common uh, a product catalog, we can share uh, information easier. And uh, if you look at the SDG goals 17, you know, partnerships for infrastructure, we're looking uh, um, from the Consumer Goods uh, Council perspective together with our regulator, how do we share the same data sets with our SMMEs so that their supply chains can be connected to these big brand owners, but also smaller ones. Further, retailers are recognizing to jumpstart our economy, we need to buy local and we need to repurpose some of our manufacturing to produce goods that we cannot uh, purchase out because there was a constraint on supply and everybody wanted PPE. So retailers are, are realizing that they have to have alternate sources, uh, sources of supply, but to get product uh, on shelf timelessly, how do we repurpose our economy? And that, that's a shift already in a lot of our uh, retailers' uh, uh, thinking. I think price is also an important. Uh, they've recognized that looking after the consumer is, is critical. Uh, it's not just about making profits. That's, that's visibly a conversation we have, but it's how you become more consumer centric. In South Africa, the, the retail and manufacturing sector was very retail shopper focused. But what we see now is that the consumer is central. Uh, for instance, uh, you go to a shop, you were seeing people want to know more information about their medication. They want to know what's the ingredients and, 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 and getting that information out on the digital platforms uh, has been uh, a significant one but also partnerships. I think the retail community in South Africa realizes that they cannot do this alone. And if we do not partner within the SEDEC or re have regional value chains to collectively pull together to, 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 to look after our communities and our consumers, uh, we're going to be diverging. So whilst there is competition and advantages that they have within their own right, working as a collective for common benefit uh, is, is, a clear, uh, is, a, is a clear focus. And I think the last thing that I just want to point out is that on a continent where you have lots of substandard and illicit trade, having been uh, having had a lockdown with no alcohol and no cigarettes, we found our fiscus depleted because of uh, you know uh, no taxes going in. So we need to protect the country's borders to ensure that counterfeit illicit goods and substandard products is less. And we can only do that if we start digitalizing and get online and have better ways of checking what's flowing across our borders. Uh, and I think retailers recognize that uh, on, on the African continent. Uh, the last thing is from a food security perspective, retailers recognize that if we want to be more food secure in a country because there were millions of people going without food, you know, they had to get food parcels. If we don't look at, uh, you know, uh, looking at our supply and demand within the retail space and looking how we better manage uh, how food gets through and we don't waste it, what are we doing with that? Uh, I think that has focused uh, during COVID-19 significantly, particularly in our townships. Um, and we're hoping to see that uh, speed up in the coming months, uh, that we, we focus on feeding uh, you know, our, 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 consume, our, our population, but also look at how the retail and the fast-moving consumer goods uh, suppliers get together and, and resolve this issue of the food insecurity. Uh, whilst there's abundance of food, but getting it right 
and, and not wasting has been a, a good focus. But no doubt, like Mariano, uh, digitalization and fast tracking our online uh, digital platforms is, is critical. And we can only do that through partnerships again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Michelle. You. It's, I think it's, it's, um, it's very interesting to, to, to have this point of view from uh, all over the world and, and from, uh, from economies and uh, different continents, con continents that uh, are so different from, from ours. So, um, so the next question is for Dr. Hitesh. Uh, Dr. Hitesh, uh, I would like to, you to tell us something about the hybridization. Um, do you think it's already a reality? It, or, or we are just in a process. Are consumers choosing to buy online because it's more difficult to buy in stores or, it, or it's just because they now uh, already prefer online uh, shopping? One thing which is universal, what this pandemic has done, and my two panelists have already said this, the major impact that has come for retail is a digitalization of consumers. And this is the biggest shift. And as far as India is concerned, that uh, we have seen in the last six months, uh, a, a massive uh, digital influence has happened and digital adoption momentum is likely to continue and be carry forward it bec and become permanent due to this pandemic. So initially, if X percentage of the population was using digital, today we are using 10 times or 20 times or 50 times more than what the uh, scenario was pre-pandemic. It is shaped by two major uh, shifts in the consumer behavior. The reluctance to mingle in the crowded places and the higher propensity for digital adoption. So these are the two major pillars which uh, we have seen there. And adoption has accelerated from previously uninitiated users, especially in underpenetrated categories such as grocery. And this is one thing uh, on hybridization that I would like to uh, touch upon is that this category of grocery, uh, which is the, the you know we can say more more or less 45 watt percentage of the uh, the the revenue uh, from the purse of a consumer, and because of this. Uh, a lot of digitalization has adopted. Consumers have also increased use of omni-channel platforms and services like contactless payments. They have they, are st they have started using uh, social commerce and uh, curbside pickup, etc. We have seen a lot of usage of WhatsApp also uh, in in across the country, where most of the retailers have jumped onto the WhatsApp platform and they've used this platform to sell their products and services, especially the, the local uh, uh, goods and you know uh, uh, the grocery uh, shopping and the day-to-day -day, uh, items that are very, very critical. Consumers are also embracing uh, conscious consumerism and the demand also for, as we al already mentioned about the supply chain part, the local goods part and so on and so forth. Uh, the consumers today want to are shopping more consciously. They are looking out for more price value equation. And because of all these factors and di digitalization happening, I think uh, the industry is moving towards uh, a unified commerce uh, as far as India is concerned. And we don't see it as a digital versus a physical uh, retail. We are looking at it as uh, something which is uh, omni-channel unified commerce. And that's where this is an uh, imperative for today's market that hybrid is a necessity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hitesh. Um, and the next question is for uh, for Mariano Tordo. Um, in uh, with all that we are we are hearing, um, it, it's it's a little it's a little scary that maybe the physical stores will end up disappearing or reducing the, the number of, uh, of presence. Uh, what do you think about this? Is, in the, is the future mm, without, uh, do we have a future ahead without physical stores or we will always have them? No, no, actually I think, yes, that we are thinking of physical stores and retailers are thinking on physical stores in a different way. They play a different role on the omnichannel experience for clients on one hand, and on the other hand, they play a different uh, role for us, for, for, 
they play a role like dark stores or fulfillment centers and and they are used for for other type of experiences when we are thinking of ne next year budget or where we are going to spend money we are thinking on this new dif different type of, of physical stores giving a, a chance for consumers to 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 relate with their with with the brands in a different way there are some shopper experiences that need to be physical uh, so when and, and when we analyze uh, big players around the world they are moving also faster to 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 be physical too so it's not only digital uh, we need some sort of uh, relationship or some sort of um, um, the, a, a way of understanding how products work or or, or something that it's not just with an online experience with a chatbot or or when someone online or calling to 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 a number. So we think that they will have a different role, a very important one, and we have to see that where we are located maybe is something that we have to 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 rethink. As I mentioned before, store visits are are not going to be the same. So we we have some some meters. In the stores that we have to change uh, what what the role it is, and the the good thing of it is that we are now thinking on being more efficient on on the way we think uh, we can have both worlds, digital and on and offline, together so that we can gain uh, a mutual a good effect on on, on both worlds as well. Um, do, do you have any uh, experience already in mind or new experience to offer in this uh, new type of uh, physical store? Uh, or it's just something that we will have to make up and, and, and be very creative in the, in the coming months? No, yes, yes. There are plenty of examples in Argentina that they are moving to, to, to this type of, of stores. Um, but the, I, when we see the effect of, of the, 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 the COVID, is, it's easy to see when you see a restaurant, for example, the way we relate with restaurants, it's something different. So if you extrapolate that to, to every type of shopping way or shopping or malls or, or whatever, it's something that is going to, to, to change and it's changing a lot. In Argentina, it's like, Every every business has to adapt to this. So, yes, we are seeing a lot of changes here. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mariano. Um, another question uh, to um, uh, Mrs. Padayachi, and I think it's going to be the last question. I'm afraid we are running out of time. Um, do you think that brands now have the opportunity to have a much closer communication now with the customers and um, through the digital communication, which is a very powerful tool. And uh, do you think that the imprint will be stronger opposite to what we used to think that the imprint is, are, were stronger in the physical stores? Uh, so thanks for the question. I think uh, from a South African context, certainly we're going to see uh, in-store shopping still part of the equation. Uh, but our early indication on our recent stats delivered is seeing that there's a 38% jump on online purchasing, which is significant. Uh, whilst the world is at about 71% uh, upswing on global digital uh, commerce, we have a way to go to make sure that the footprint uh, is broadened. Um, they, they are embracing uh, online um, buying. For instance, I went into a store and I, I had to get a new pair of glasses and guess what the spec saver said to me you, you don't need to come in just tell us which of the seven pairs you need and we'll deliver it to you and you can try and then return the rest and they'll pick it up so that's a that's a significant shift uh, from a pharmaceutical perspective we see a lot of uh, uh, home deliveries um, and and that's a uh, that's definitely on the growth um, and 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 we even see more of our staff uh, on a practical way uh, taking that up because of the work from home uh, protocols. Um, but I think in, uh, from a South African and aesthetic uh, perspective, we'll see still a mix of uh, bricks and mortar, uh, but much more online. 
with a more customized and more personalized approach to uh, shopping and, and certainly putting more content online is there's, there's a phenomenal growth. Uh, we're seeing an increase on that and digital content uh, providers, there's a, there's a, a definite uh, a need uh, for, for growing in that space. But also um, the marketing teams within organizations, both on the retail side and the uh, brand owners, they are looking for ways to share content quicker, more consistently and more accurately because the consumer wants to trust what products they are buying. They want to know that when they order, this is what I'm getting. So there's definitely a focus uh, to, to moving uh, towards that. Further, we see that a lot of the retailers will uh, continue to focus on supply chain capability, uh, uh, as the other uh, panelists have said, and build warehouses closer to communities uh, ensure that we optimize our logistics within uh, the country uh, to get product more efficiently around the, the supply chains. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that the government is looking into building SMME and Spaza shop capability, uh, but we also see that the, the retail sector working closely uh, to build that capability uh, so that communities are closer to products and, and that there's a lot more efficiencies on shipping products out to community so that there's not longer commute. So this is where we see it in South Africa. And, and practically, uh, there's some uh, you know hurdles that we need to jump, uh, but a good balance of uh, in-store still with a significant growth, I think, in the next five years for online. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Badashi uh, and uh, Mr. Tordo, and also Dr. Uh, Hitesh Bat, thank you for, uh, for your uh, your opinions, your experience for sharing uh, this uh, morning, here morning uh, with us. And uh, I think that um, it would be very interesting to, to go further on with more questions, but we are uh, out of time. So I think um, I'm going to hand over the, um, the, this, uh, this summit with, uh, with Nuria, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Enma. También gracias a todos los speakers que han participado. Y yo me he quedado con una duda, llevándolo al terreno nacional, que sería, en esta hibridización, hybridization que habéis contado, el, el sector online ya está por encima de la venta física. Si, si esto es una competición, ¿quién va ganando en, en España? Es, es muy difícil, uh, I'm sorry, en in, inglés. In no, no. Uh, en, en español, en, vale. En, es, es muy difícil de decirlo porque estamos, como hemos visto con nuestros ponentes, estamos ahora analizando cuál es la nueva situación. Lo que está claro es que la tendencia es de online, uh, la, la, el crecimiento de online es tremendo y teniendo en cuenta la, la cantidad de tiendas que parece que van a cerrar, pues eh, parece que la, la, lo que está claro es que vamos más a online que a offline y lo que nos comentaban los, los ponentes, que quien es más rápido adaptándose a esta nueva realidad y haciendo que se fusionen las dos, las dos cosas. Pero perdona, tenemos que competir, o sea, tenemos que vernos como una competición entre uno y no, otro. No, yo creo que no, yo creo que hay que buscar un equilibrio porque la, las marcas van a querer tener ambos mercados, lo que, si, no, no, que no se puede apostar solamente por un, por un canal, solo el físico, si se sabe que el online es, eh, está creciendo, ni tampoco eh, ponerlo todo en el online porque el físico y el, siempre es la conexión con el cliente final. Entonces, en mi opinión, hay que buscar el equilibrio. Ahora estamos en una tendencia al alza de online, pero como decían nuestros ponentes, esta tendencia lo que tiene que hacer es reforzar el punto de venta y, al, y también el punto de venta tiene que adaptarse a esta nueva digitalización e incorporar al propio punto de venta las ventajas de la información digital. ¿Y qué papel? Porque, claro, hemos hablado con el doctor Hitesh, que tiene una amplia trayectoria y mucha relación, sobre todo, con la parte más administrativa y pública. ¿Qué papel tienen que tener los gobiernos en este cambio? Estamos en un sistema capitalista, lo sabemos, pero ¿hay algún punto de interacción de las administraciones? Eh, bueno, me, me haces una pregunta muy difícil porque precisamente el tema, el tema gubernamental se me escapa bastante. A ver, está claro que, que, 
que para llevar a cabo todos estos cambios se necesita primero unas, unas infraestructuras y una, y una estabilidad económica y sobre todo dar mucha confianza. En, 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 es, todo es opinión personal, pero la, la confianza, establecer un, un, un hábito de, de, de confianza entre los consumidores y las pequeñas empresas, sobre todo, y, y las grandes también, pero los, los pequeños eh, empresarios, eh, y que la gente esté motivada para consumir, yo creo que eso es responsabilidad gubernamental, de que creen un ambiente, de, de, que, se, de, que, hay, de que las perspectivas de futuro son buenas para seguir consumiendo. ¿no? Esta es más fácil, Emma, como branding coach que es. Aquí, aquí yo no te lo pongo ni, nada difícil. Eh, ¿qué, ¿Qué problemas o qué preguntas más frecuentes te encuentras cuando haces este coaching a las pequeñas y medianas empresas después del impacto de la COVID? Bueno, el, el, es muy curioso porque el impacto de COVID en el pequeño empresario, eh, lo, eh, ellos se han dado cuenta de una manera totalmente orgánica que necesitan digitalizarse. Entonces, eh, el, el pequeño empresario que no tenía presencia online lo que quiere es rápidamente alguien que le posicione en un, en un que le haga una página web súper rápido, que, que pueda él tener un canal de comunicación que hasta ahora no tenía. Entonces, para, para el pequeño empresario ahora es una urgencia ser digital. ¿Esta urgencia la, la, la responderíamos con esta celeridad de crear una web y ala y a salir bueno, hay al que, ruedo? No. ¿O, o hay, hay un trabajo previo no, que supongo trabajo. que desde tu consultoría Por supuesto. puedes apoyar? Y yo creo que si nos desgranas cuatro ideas serán muy positivas para todos aquellos que nos estén escuchando. Eh, bueno, básicamente es hablar con el, con el pequeño empresario, ayudarle a saber qué es lo que quiere transmitir y qué es lo que quiere, qué, qué es, cómo se quiere presentar al mundo, porque al final te presentas a un mundo diferente. Si estás acostumbrado a trabajar on, offline y te tienes que poner online y tienes que ponerlo eh, en, en cuatro líneas porque tienes que ser muy claro, pues ayudar a captar bien el, el mensaje y el alma, digamos, de, del proyecto. Eh, eso, eso es para mí lo básico uh -huh. y escuchar, escuchar mucho, no, son eh, empresas que no están acostumbradas a, a tener a, a una consultoría a su lado, entonces eh, tienes que facilitar un poco el, el que ellos se abran y, y se expresen y entonces eh, ponérselo muy fácil, ponérselo muy fácil, darles las herramientas mínimas digitales que necesitan y que puedan empezar a crecer. Pues la importancia de, de, sobre todo, generar marca, de darnos cuenta que las empresas también necesitan sus propios coach, como las personas, ¿no? Sí. Y que no todo se resume en una simple página web y que por eso hoy contábamos con, con tu testimonio, porque es muy importante crear esta brand, marca a través de, del branding. Muchas gracias, Emma, también, a todos ti. los Muchas que gracias. se han conectado. Hemos sido cuatro continentes en un mismo sitio y esta es una de las grandes características que hacen único el Vinio Barcelona. Volvemos dentro de 10 minutos.